Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of a WordPress website video series. In this video, we're going to look at what a domain name actually is. And we're going to answer the question, do I really own my domain name? But before we get on to that, a big congratulations. If you've been following this course through, in your last video, you managed to get a WordPress website running in a Docker container next to its required SQL database, also in a container, passed through your router on port 80 to the outside world. So that if you typed in your uh, public IP address in a browser, you would get a website. So well done, you are hosting your own website on your own Raspberry Pi. It's quite an achievement. So you've done it, but have you? Well, as mentioned, as alluded to, a domain is required. You don't have a domain, well, you absolutely need one. You don't want to have to type in your IP address in order to navigate to your website. It's also not indexable by the search engines of today. Therefore, you won't be um, receiving much traffic to your website through search engines. You're basically running your website on the dark web. So we need a domain. Secondly, you're in need of HTTPS. You must encrypt your website, particularly if you have any personal information, and that includes any kind of login screen. Now for WordPress, this is very important because you absolutely do have a login screen. The CMS itself requires authenticating through a login screen, so you absolutely do need encryption. Similarly, you do need an email server. Now you can use email servers that already exist, like Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, uh, but it's much more professional if you have an email server which represents the domain of your website, and we'll be looking at how we can do that in a later part of this course. We're still also in need of a proper WordPress website. At the moment, we just have a blank theme, a default page, as it were, and we need to improve on that. So part of this course is going to be looking at how you build a WordPress website uh, by basically creating your own theme. It's going to be partly a programming course and partly using the CMS. And finally, we really do need a continuous integration pipeline to develop the website with. Do not underestimate this last point. Do not stop short. The CI will make your life so much easier, but it's very hard to do for WordPress. And actually, the CI was the main reason I decided to write this course in the first place. It is the most unique and bespoke part of this course. So I'm very much looking forward to getting to it later. So what's in a domain name anyway? Well, a domain is simply a proxy for an IP address. That's all it is. So it says, for example, mygreatwebsite.com equals 12345678. Well, actually, strictly speaking, it's the domain name server's responsibility to do that. And we'll be talking about DNS servers in just a few minutes. But a DNS server will basically make that relationship happen. My domain name that I've bought, which is just a string, it's just a series of letters such as mygreatwebsite.com, and it will say this is equal to this IP address. So a domain name is literally just that. It is a name and nothing more. So you bought it. So you own it, right? You've paid real money for this. Well, actually, you don't. You lease it for a year. And this is why you have to pay annually. I'd imagine, and it did occur to me many years ago when I first bought my first domain, that you're thinking when you bought it, hang on, why do I have to pay every year? And this is why you're actually not owning the domain as such, you're just leasing it. So let's talk about how that works and why. Well, you lease it from a registrar. Often, a registrar is a hosting company. This, is, this makes sense because the hosting company already is hosting websites, they may as well act as a registrar as well. But what makes them a registrar? Why are they allowed to, to act in this capacity? Why don't they compete with each other in a sense? Well, I suppose they would do, except that the registrars are delegated they're delegated by an organization called ICANN. And ICANN stands for the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. It's a non-profit American organization. So how this really works is you buy the rights for a year to a name. So it's essentially a namespace, a unique namespace on the Internet. And your registrar is what makes the connection between you personally, so your name, your address and your phone number, which you would have had to have put in when you bought the domain and that name. And that would be populated in the who is database. But something that the registrar will often do, and I recommend you do ensure this setting is set, 
is they will have your information obfuscated and replaced with their information in the Whois database. Because Whois is publicly accessible and it's easily scrapable. So to avoid having your personal information put in the Whois database, your registrar will likely put their information in. And they are the holders of who you are and therefore how the connection works between you and the domain name. So that's all it is. It's just a registration process. So that's all well and good. You legally own a word. Congratulations. But how do you link that to your router, i.e. how do you link it to your public IP address? Well, when you buy a domain, the registrar will point you to a DNS server. This is generally the case, and that's because most registrars are hosting companies and they have their own DNS servers. This means if you actually navigate to your recently bought domain, you'll probably get to a landing page, which probably says something like, great, please use our own website builder tool to build a website, and it will be the hosting company's builder tool. It's a bit of advertising for them. And you can use their DNS server to point to your, uh, point to your IP address. That's the point of a DNS server, domain name server. We want to get the IP address of your router to point to your domain. And that's the function of a DNS server. Now, like I say, we could use theirs, but what we're going to do in this course and what the majority of the internet do is we're going to use Cloudflare. There are lots of good reasons for that and I'll talk about those reasons in the next uh, video. But we're going to be using Cloudflare. So the next thing to do before you move on to the next video and to close off this video, is go and create a Cloudflare account. It's completely free, but we're going to be using it to host our website's name and relate it to our router's IP address. And it does this because Cloudflare, for the most part, is just a well-established domain name server. So go and do that, and I will see you in the next video where we'll be setting up a Cloudflare account I actually own my own domain, which I bought partly for this course. So I'll be walking through on the screen how I relate my domain name to my IP address. So you can copy and do the same. If you've found this video useful, please do like it and please do subscribe to my course. I'll be putting out many more videos on Raspberry Pi related coding. So hopefully you'll find those interesting as well. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next video.